Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to try to button up the Hydro E-Brake conversion. So here's the handle all welded up and uh, it's pretty damn solid. Um, today I want to do the uh, the lines for for the, the Hydro E-Brake and uh, I sat long and strong. I didn't do anything yesterday and thought about pretty much what I wanted to do as far as the line goes. And uh, I was like, okay, well, I watch SP tuning. I'll run from the prop valve to this and then this to the rear so we can still retain all four brakes. And then I realized, you know, after going back and editing my video, I can't because I forgot that I have a Willwood unit which has its own reservoir and only one outlet instead of one in, one out. So if I wanted to, you know, keep fluid pressure um, all the way across four brakes i would have to swap this over to like you know um like a two port or a stock like clutch master or some but like i said i'm gonna work with what i have and um, i got big brakes on the front and i also have a gsr booster with the master so i'm not worried about it not stopping because i can always use the e-brake and stuff to slow me down as i go down a track but what i'm gonna do is pretty much like i said i'm gonna run that to the two lines back here which goes to the rear and then i'm going to plug up the one in the front for the rear line so that way the prop valve is utilizing the two fronts that one runs the rear i'm gonna go to home depot get some fittings see what they have over there that'll help me you know tee off the rear lines and stuff like that so they didn't have any of the fittings i needed at a home depot and then i was headed to go buy something to eat and i was like fuck i'm gonna take a little detour to the junkyard i need the clevis the clevis the clevis um for the uh master or uh brake booster that little u-shape that i need for the hydro um i'm gonna pull one out of this integra and to get on out of here keep my hands clean and uh probably not gonna do the hydro conversion today i'm gonna order some fittings for some mid racing that's gonna be a day shipment and then uh we'll figure something else when we get home all right so i just um ordered all of the fittings that i need on submitracing.com spent about 15 bucks and uh that's not too shabby i was gonna try to buy like a um or hit up jb tune for like a clutch line not a clutch line but like a dash three line but i'm th i think i'm just gonna build it out of uh hard line from the uh masters to the rear brakes or the, to the rear hard lines and um you know just do it like that Hagger garage has been doing it forever because i've been following them forever but anyways um, right now, I gotta head back out. I gotta go and smog the green van so we can get the registration up to par. And then when we get back, I'll, I don't know, I'll brainstorm as I drive to figure out what I'm gonna do because I can't finish the hydro e brake line today given that I don't have the fittings. But uh, plenty of other things to do. So I just did smog and the car passed with flying colors. Got the paperwork right there. I just came back from. AutoZone, or actually I just came back from O'Reilly's and uh, I was looking for the filter for my catch can. They have a bunch of them, but none of them were the one and a quarter or one and three quarter um, opening that I needed for my catch can. So headed back home now and probably gonna order, I should have ordered one off some mid racing. I completely forgot about that shit. Not having the fittings for the Hydro E-Brake hella threw me off. Like I, I don't even know what I want to do anymore. You know what I mean? Like. It, I'm like distracted now like I want to finish it but I can't now I got to factor in the fact that it's hot and what do I want to do what what is this weather putting me in the mood for you know what I mean like I think I want to color sand or wet sand the rust-oleum paint job just one side today and um, polish it out um, I don't know if you guys seen a few a lot of videos ago actually I polished a portion of it right here and you can see the difference in the clarity, right? And then over here is like, oh damn, potato, right? I think I might just polish this this half of the car today because we're affiliating with water today. We're, we're, we're using water today and water and heat, you know, keeps me cool, right? Um, I think that's what I'm gonna do until the fittings come in tomorrow, then we'll um, continue on with the hydro. But right now let's whip out all my sandpapers. Now, first of all, before you even start sanding, you want to clean your car, like wash it and get all the dirt and grimes off of it. And then, um, you know, 
start your sanding process because if you're sanding with the dirt the dirt can actually scratch deeper than the sandpaper um, ideally you just want to get rid of the orange peel you can kind of see it right there and um, you know with a lower grit like 1500 or a thousand depending on how bad your orange peel is it'll cut this down a lot quicker but I don't want to cut it quicker I just want to cut it enough to where you know it's nice and flat out but not digging the crap out of the paint so all I'm doing is water bottle sprayer spraying as I sand and um, I am just slowly doing this until we can get a solid spot and then move forward up into you know the rest of the panel and uh, ideally you want to do this with soap because soap cleans it out as you're sanding it I didn't put no soap in but I'm gonna finish this quarter right here and then up to the pillar because this is all connected and then we'll see about doing the doors or whatever but um if i don't get to it i don't get to it i'm also using a soft um block and this will you know help with the curvature and stuff if you're using a uh, a really stiff block it can cut down like edges uh deeply um another tip stay away from all the edges don't sand the edges don't worry about the edges because once this is all nice and shiny you're not going to worry about the very minimal orange peel on the edges so i'm just sanding like away from the edges because edges burn really quickly all right i quickly wiped off the water and um just doing a quick check on areas that i've missed like right there completely and that little patch right there completely not sure how i missed it but uh i've missed it so wiping it down with a rag as you go kind of shows you uh, the areas that need some work so like right here need some work and uh i pretty much just stopped up to about right here and i'm still gonna go all the way down but i'm not gonna spend too much time on this pillar because it's so narrow that even the 2000 grit was burning through it you can kind of see that slight black line right there that's the uh underneath color so i'm just gonna skim through all of that and touch up a lot of the areas that i've missed get it nice and smooth right now it's like butt smooth like really smooth and um i'm probably just gonna polish this section and then you know I'm not gonna do a whole video on the whole car different days i'll do different sections and uh you know a little bit at a time especially because this heat is like making me want to go inside and sit with the ac but um it's looking good it's feeling good all right um this is as far as i'm gonna get for sanding um this whole quarter and pillar i've went over it twice wipe sand wipe and uh, i got most of the orange peel out except all of the little areas because you can see right there i started sanding right here and then all that black started showing up <laughs> um so i'm going to start uh getting my buffer and everything all ready but just want to show you guys uh what i've done as far as uh sanding with just 2000 grit it's really nice and smooth it's so smooth that the underside of my palm is getting tickled and uh, if you guys want to get like a brief idea on how your panel is supposed to look or how it's going to look when you start polishing it, put some water on the sanded area. That's how it's supposed to look when it's done. So I'm going to get my stuff set up and then I'm going to get down to polishing this. So I'm not doing this with clear coat. I'm just going to polish the paint. Now, if I had clear coat on here, I would bomb out of the spray can the crystal clear and uh you know sand the crap out of it but i've had great results before without clear coat so that's what i'm doing and uh, as long as i keep it nice and um protected the sun shouldn't beat it up i think um the most shine i've had out of just base coat or no clear was about two years before it faded to the point of primer looking so um all i did was polished it back out and uh, it was shining again but um really don't want to spend uh, money for clear coat so i'm just gonna um polish the base coat rather than clear coat now if you was to clear coat um after sanding it down like so then you apply the clear coat so that way underneath is all nice and smooth and then if you layer the clear coat on top 
really smoothly. It shouldn't be much sanding to get it all nice and flat out before you polish it out to glass. Um, but this time around, I'm just going to polish the base. And uh, so far, very promising. Now the results were looking good with uh, that polishing pad or cutting pad or whatever the fuck pad this is, um, but it wasn't quite glassy. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't sharp. Given that that's an old pad, um, that may have something to do with why the image isn't clear on the paint. So I relied back on my Milwaukee uh, little polishing tool here, and this is foam. The Harbor Freight foam that I used on that before worked great. So this little foam thing right here, I'm using the Sudsbox Delete to kind of go over my old, literally that compound is about four years old, okay? Now, like I said, I reverted back to my little Milwaukee polishing tool here with my Sudsbox Delete, and look at the difference, okay? This is the first pass right there, or actually right there, right? And then I went over with the Sudsbox. Holy difference. Probably why I stopped using that a long time ago. But this is not meant for big jobs. So later when I do all the other panels, I'll go to Harbor Freight, grab that cutting and polishing pad because they have one for call, uh, cutting and then they have one for polishing, like, you know, finishing. So I'm just gonna go over this quarter, the pillar again. The pillar looks good. It's just a quarter, it's a bigger panel. It looks not as good. So I'm gonna go through all of this with this guy and then uh, really show you what the uh, finishing product looked like. Damn. So I went through this whole quarter panel and pillar, one solid pass with uh, speed one and then speed two. And then I went back some of the areas that I thought was still blemishes and uh, you know, pretty much finished all of that out. Right now, I am probably going to do the revive, which is the second compound after the delete compound. And I'm just going to go over this real quick with a different pad and uh, pretty much be done with this whole um, passenger quarter. And then I'm going to seal it too. I'm going to go check out what I have and then seal it. But as of right now, I'm starting to uh, accept the fact that these lines that are inside the paint are from my preparation. Not from this, not from that, but from when I sanded it. So it is what it is, looking a ton better than what it was before, and I'm happy. Oh my God. I'm using a Revive, and I'm using this pad again, just like that big one that I had, but not as old. The difference in the feel is noticeable, and a lot of the line scratches are gone and the clarity is a lot more crispier than the delete um the delete is a cutting compound and then the revive is a finishing compound so obviously the clarity is going to be a lot better but look at that and then look at the original 50 dollar finish right there opposed to the cut delete and revive oh my goodness All right, so we're done with the delete and the revive. So now I'm gonna be using the Illuminate. And uh, this is a sealant wax hybrid. So the direction in the back says pretty much apply a thin layer of this compound 
throughout the whole area that's being treated and then you let it sit for 30 minutes or longer and then you polish it off with a clean um, microfiber towel to a high gloss so you pretty much are gonna polish it off with a new rag and uh, I'm gonna apply this on my treated area and then we're gonna talk about the turbo stuff productive day to say the least uh, because I didn't have all the fittings to complete the hydro conversion but we still made progress on something quarter panels looking really good and I cannot wait until the whole car is uh, cut polished and treated right now the uh, quarter panel is uh, kind of like hazeled up because we applied the illuminate um, sealant from Suzbox. It's almost 30 minutes and we're going to polish this out with a clean uh, microfiber towel and then we'll show you the final product. But let's talk about the turbo setup that we're going to be doing on this car so a couple months ago i had talked about you know if you guys help me reach 20k which i'm truly blessed because you guys are killing it the numbers keep climbing to some and may not be much because it's only 20k but to me it's truly a blessing like thank thank you guys for the support like it's unreal for for real for real and i had set a goal for if you guys had helped me hit 20k we're gonna boost the h22 and um you know, I've had a ton of parts lying around and then I had people who picked up on my address and then uh, started sending me some parts, which is weird and awesome at the same time. But, um, you know, in regards to that, guys, I am trying to open a P.O. box this week, hopefully, or before the week ends. And um, then we'll have a place for you guys to send me anything you guys will like. Um, but as far as the turbo goes, I know I still want to go quicker than 12.4 before we do boost it, and that is the plan. So, track was set for June 30th, and uh, it was actually canceled and converted to a bike show. Pretty much the next track for me is going to be in August. But there are going to be a lot of TNTs and Wednesday night drags, and then, um, you know, I can go to any one of those before we turbo car, even if we hit 20K. I'm still going to try to make another pass on the track or at least beat my personal best before we do. There is a track this weekend, June 16th, and it is uh, actually north, further than Sacramento. It's about a five-hour drive, which is going to be killer for me, honestly. Um, but it is the uh, next closest event, and I am considering going out there, but it's just like it's so far out, you know what I mean? Like, it would be crazy for me to drive that far out by myself. Uh, the morning of because it is a late evening into the night type of event so I am gonna try maybe to, to get out there but if not then I'm gonna have to go to like a TNT or a uh, Wednesday night drag with a few buddies out here so anyways about the turbo setup um, I am gonna be taking the turbo out of the wagon for the build now before you guys stop 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 now before you guys comment Oh, are you going to take out the turbo from the wagon or why are you taking it out so on and so forth? The reason why I'm taking the turbo out of the wagon, I was going to do it anyways because the turbo is too small for the setup for the compression ratio and it spools way too quickly and interferes with the whole VTEC and um, AFR. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it, it's too small. So I'm going to take this turbo setup out or not turbo setup. I'm sorry. I'm going to take this turbo out, put it in this car. Now the turbo you see right here is my GT35R dual ball bearing turbo. The only downfall of this turbo is the compressor wheel being chipped. But the guy I bought it from made about 470 still to the wheels and uh, this turbo is still pretty cherry. Um, so I'm going to take this 35R, put it in there and get this car retuned and then take that turbo for the H. Now. Several people has been reaching out to me about uh, contributing to the build and um, let me show you what I got and what I've gotten and what I need. So this manifold right here was sent to me from a buddy out in Hawaii. Sean, thank you very much. Uh, I turned down a Megan Racing header for the build since I was doing a side exit and he just secretly sent me a H22 turbo manifold. Granted, it is tubular. It is eBay. I'm going to run this until... You know it's done done and uh, if it cracks I can weld it if it's like completely broken then I'm gonna buy material to fab up a new manifold out of you know three or four schedule 10 manifold um, for the setup and this will definitely do for now 
It's a 38 millimeter wastegate and I have a EMUSA or EMUSA wastegate right here. The diaphragm is completely ripped. I've opened it before and um, ideally I wanted to go up the hood but the flange hits the runner so I'm going to have to point this down and somehow loop it back up or I don't know do some magic and make it work. But I'm not running this one. I'm going to be running a tile. I'm hoping to get a tile or find one for cheap. Tile 2 bolt uh, 38 millimeter wastegate. And that's going to be pretty much the setup. Again, 35R. It's practically the same compression housing and everything. So what you see here is what you're going to expect on the H except a blue turbo housing. So I'm going to run the 60-1 on this manifold. And then I got plenty of vacuum lines lying around. I have a V-band. Um female male with the clamp and what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to weld this onto this turbo because i am v-band in the wagon and then the turbo within the wagon is v-band as well so i'm going to need the other end i have plenty of brand new i have plenty of brand new piping three inch that i'm going to make an up pipe out the hood with that turbo i have this god knows what this blow off valve is so Whatever blow off valve this is, I found it in my bin. Oh, there it is, Turbo Excess. This was part of Carrie's turbo kit, but I gave him my Grady RS and uh, I kept this. I'm not sure if I wanna run this thing, but if I have to, I will. If I can find another blow off valve, I'll run another blow off valve. I really don't like, like, you know, just, I don't know, Turbo Excess. But a tile or a HKS or something. I had somebody reach out to me about giving me a HKS rep, which will work just fine for me. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna set up a PO box and I have them send it to me and then, you know, we'll make use of it. Return line, I have fittings, I have brand new lines in the bin. I got brand new lines right there so we can make a return line. I do need to buy a new dash three feed line cause I lent mine out and um, I don't have one for this car. This was donated to me from AD from Arizona. A uh, huge shout out to AD for giving me this uh, for the build. This is an H22 alternator relocating bracket kit, which uses the single cam alternator and bracket, which I have right here Uh huh. from that motor. So I'm gonna relocate the alternator downward and just give me more clearance because this guy right here literally points the wastegate to the alternator. So huge plus thank you ad once again for this i have plenty of intercoolers to choose from i got this dual back door i got that dual back door i got that giant core up in the front probably gonna run a dual back door because i don't want that giant thing sticking out of my front bumper you know hideously and the radiator the radiator right here is going to be modified slimmer than that and probably about the size of the fan you can kind of visually check it out right there and uh, like i said all i'm going to need this fan for is for me to go down the track and back let it cool do it again it's going to be perfect for the setup plus it'll give me a lot of clearance so that's pretty much all it is for the turbo kit there are a few things like i've mentioned that i'm going to need uh a new wastegate i definitely want a different blow -off valve and i need a line for the feed and then everything else is just straight up fab works it has been about 28 minutes and you can see where I accidentally touched it right there. And boy, look at that gloss underneath the sealant. So I'm just gonna send it. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna wait that two minutes and I'm gonna polish it out. Oh my God, what? Wow, it feels straight up butter. Polish it out guys, polish it out. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo, that is unreal. Rustolan $50 paint job, cut and polished with Suds Box Compound. Delete, revive, and illuminate. Now imagine down the whole car.
But that is going to do it for this video, guys. I think I am pretty drenched today given that uh, we were standing in this heat. Plus the three-stage, four-stage with the diamond cut polishing job. And uh, we're looking so good over here. Talked a little bit about the turbo. A lot more to expect on the channel. I hope you guys are as excited as I am when the time comes. And if you are, please smack that like button, guys. Um, I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of the day. About to go to Costco, get some, you know, uh, some stuff to eat because Costco pizza and hot dog are bizarre. <laughs> bomb, I meant bomb, guys. But with that being said, I hope you enjoy this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.